I, uh, with reclamation, obviously, uh, everybody knows the importance of water to Arizona. It's our lifeblood. And uh, fortunately, uh, you have a lot of experience. Uh, you mentioned your experience with Senator Kyle's office. Can you talk about Indian water settlements and, uh, and uh, how important that is to states like Arizona and other Western states? Senator, thank you for raising that. Uh, I've been working on Indian water rights settlements my entire career. Uh, for Arizona and for the other states in the West, I, it, it's hard to explain how important they are. Uh, Indian tribal rights are often first in time, first in right, which means that they call into question rights that came after them uh, by negotiating, by settling these rights, by not... Uh, by not going to litigation, you can come up with solutions that are good for all parties. And, and that's, I would like to say, there, there's been a, a great history in Arizona of doing that. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's true across the West. I, I think that the best solutions come from collaboration, they come from negotiation, and they come from the parties coming together to settle those claims. Well, I can tell you, as a senator following Senator Kyle, it's a bit daunting, uh, given the work that he's done on, on water and in particular with these uh, Indian water settlements, who, as you say, are vital because it gives some kind of certainty and surety moving ahead for uh, not just the, the tribes involved, but other, other water users as well. Um, obviously, the, the uh, Colorado River is extremely important to Arizona, all the lower basin and upper basin as well. Um, can you talk about uh, what needs are there with regard to the Colorado River uh, going ahead that reclamation is going to be vital to? Uh, the Colorado River, as you said, is the lifeblood to Arizona, but also to seven basin states and to the country of Mexico. Uh, I'll be working with Secretary Zinke if confirmed to prioritize our work on the Colorado River. The Secretary has a very special role under the 1928 Boulder Canyon Project Act as the water master of the lower basin. Uh, there are issues right on the table. There's an agreement with Mexico that expires this year. I, I'll work with Secretary Zinke, if confirmed, uh, to work on reaching agreement with Mexico uh, before the end of the year, if at all possible. The states have been working together to address drought and possible upcoming shortages. Uh, they are working hard right now. I, I hope to be confirmed swiftly and to work work with them and to step into the Bureau of Reclamation and to see what we can accomplish as quickly as possible. There's a drought contingency plan uh, being worked out now, I understand. What, uh, how will you, uh, what role will you play there? As the, uh, as, as con if confirmed, as the lead of Reclamation, I'll be Secretary Zinke's prime advisor on working with the Basin States in Mexico on coming to agreement on a drought contingency plan. Why is that important moving ahead? Uh, the lower basin and the upper basin are, are looking at shortage. There have been 18 years of shortage on the Colorado River. And so the upper basin states have been working together to try and shore up to make sure that they can keep critical elevations in Lake Powell, while the lower basin states have been working together and with Mexico to make sure that they can maintain critical elevations in Lake Mead. Uh, Looking ahead and looking at shortage, this is a way to prevent the system from, uh, some would say, you know, collapsing. Hmm. You know, what you need to do is you need to keep uh, Lake Mead at a healthy level so that it can serve all the states and it can serve the constituents, and people can look ahead and plan for what the possible shortages could be. Uh, there's a lot of commitments on the table. I am not part of those discussions right now, and I haven't been, uh, but I... I do look forward to joining those and to staffing and serving Secretary Zinke as we work those out. Well, thank you. Obviously, it's important. Uh, we in Arizona, some water users have voluntarily left water behind the dam at Lake Mead to make sure that those levels stay where they need to be before, you know, uh, mandatory or arbitrary, um, you know, levels are hit that, that nobody wants to see. We've been given a bit of a reprieve uh, with a very wet winter. Um, particularly uh, further west, but uh, with uh, you know, the upper basin, it's been pretty good. Lake Powell seems to be going up. Uh, how much of a reprieve have we been given with regard to Lake Mead? Uh, I'm going to leave that to the experts. <laughs> it, uh, well, it has been a wet year, and that has been a blessing. Well, it certainly, uh, we, we know that it's going to take a lot of very wet uh, winters to get us out of the woods here. 
and that's why uh, you know these, this drought, drought, drought contingency plan is so important and to make sure that we plan. Uh, nobody likes to talk about shortages. I think we talk, refer to them as imbalances on the river, but those are significant in the future, and so it's going to take a lot of uh, planning. I'm glad that you've brought the expertise to the table that you bring uh, at, at, from a number of different angles, and so I'm, I'm excited to, to see you there and look forward to working with you if, if confirmed. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Madam Chair.